I'm gonna tell you guys about a game I like to play and I call it Let the Universe Decide For Me. So I've been playing this game for a couple of years now and I'm actually really, really good at it. So basically what I do, if I see something that I like and I really like it, but also maybe I can't justify the price or maybe I like it, but I don't think I like it quite enough to buy it. I start to play Let the Universe Decide For Me, which is basically, I like that thing, but I'm not gonna buy it today. I'm gonna wait a little while. And if it's still there when I come back again, it was meant to be. The universe has decided I either need this thing or I don't need this thing. So I played that game with two items this week. Item number one was the pastel iridescent spawn that I saw at the antique store. Tiasha pointed it out to me and I did love it when I saw it, but it was $90, I think it was. And I was like, no, I think that I could find that in a thrift store for five bucks or something. But then when I got home and I posted the video, there were so many comments from people saying, Alex, I can't believe you didn't buy that swan. It's a rare find. You're never going to find something like that in a thrift store. And I started to think about it and I was like, yeah, they're probably right, actually. Like, I would probably have to look through thrift stores for years to find a pastel iridescent swan like that. So I thought, well, if it's still there on Monday, I'll get it. So I called them first thing this morning when they opened and I said, is that pastel swan still there? And they said, yes, it is. And I said, oh, okay, well, could you please set it aside for me? So I'm gonna go pick that up. And the second item, well, actually two items, well, actually four items. <laughs> so out at the Windsor Salvos, I was there last week and I saw these two lamps. I'll put them up on the screen. Now they're vintage lamps and I thought that they were really cute, but also see how they're not matching. See how the one on the left is like a white lampshade and the one on the right is pink. Had both of them been pink, I probably would have bought them immediately on the spot. But because they had two different lampshades, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to put them on my bedside tables because they're not matching. And that would just kind of irk me. It, it would really annoy me. And I can't imagine myself finding a lampshade to suit. So I decided not to get them. And then I was editing some footage and I was looking at those lamps and I was like, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I buy them? But the thing was, I didn't like the lamp on the left because I, I really didn't like the look of that lampshade. You see how it's kind of, the lampshade itself is too small for the lamp, but the one on the right seems really nicely balanced. So I really liked the one on the, on the right, but I also didn't want to buy them if I wasn't going to buy a matching set. I thought, oh, it, does, it feels a bit wrong to buy one and not buy the other. But anyway, so I let the universe decide for me. So I called the salvos just then and said to them, do you still have those two pink lamps? And she said, I'm really sorry. One of them sold the other day. And I said, which one was it? Was it the one with the pink lampshade? And she was like, no, it was the one with the white lampshade. And I was like, well, could you set aside the pink one for me, please? I'll come get it now. So I'm on my way driving out to Windsor. It's a really long drive from where I live, but it's worth it for that lamp because the lamp is $6 six dollars like what the hell then the next item was this shelf so the shelf was at Vinnie's in Castle Hill uh, there were two of them matching shelves I saw them I've actually seen them the last three times that I've been to the store I think they've been there for a couple of weeks now they've been available that whole time and I've been umming and eyeing about if I need them or not because I wanted to get them for the guest bedroom and put them in front of the big window but also I thought maybe they're too big maybe I should just get one and then I was like, no, you can't get one without getting the other. And then again, I kind of ummed and about it, but I finally decided, no, you know what? I'm gonna go get it. Today, I'm gonna go get both of them. And I got there and one had sold and the other was still available. So I said, well, that's the universe deciding that I only need one. The universe says, you don't need both of them. Let someone else have the other one and you can have just one. So Sam and I went there this morning with Sam's trailer and we picked it up and we've taken it back to my place. So I'm gonna set my plants on it when I get home, but I just urgently need to go out and get my universe approved pink lamp right now. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go get my spawn. So that's my little story. Tell me if you play Let the Universe Decide For You. I think it's a pretty fun game. It's kind of kind of hard, it's a hard game. You know, hard to get used to, but once you do get used to it, <laughs> you can get pretty good at it. So tell me what you've played Let the Universe Decide For You with. What items has the universe decided that you didn't need or has it decided that you did need? So anyway, seeing as I'm coming all the way out to Windsor, I may as well 
uh, go to the Vinnies as well, and I might even go to Richmond too. Hey, we're just coming up on this beautiful section of road. Look how beautiful this is. So this is the sort of entry to Windsor, and uh, this is all flood land here. So they're not allowed to build anything out here. It's all just agricultural land. And I remember one of my subscribers left a comment saying, ah, it's flood land, we can't build. Ha, the Netherlands could never. Yeah, so anyway, this area, it's really beautiful. If you live kind of far, oh, I'm sorry there's a giant bird sh right in the way of the beautiful view. Oh God, I'm so sorry. There's uh, nothing I can do about that right now. <laughs> sorry, friends. But yeah, if you're looking for a day trip and you don't mind driving a little way out of Sydney, Windsor's lovely. There's a cafe out here called Simon's Cafe. Uh, I've already eaten my lunch, so I'm not gonna eat there today, but I highly recommend you visit. They have really enormous serving sizes and the food is absolutely delicious. And there's also a, um, a lolly store, like an international lolly store out here, and you can get all sorts of incredible, delicious lollies from all over the world. You can literally buy, you can get Harry Potter butter beer here. Anyway, I'm just heading in now. I'm gonna park, I'm gonna run in, grab my lamp, satisfy my inner moth, I know I look like a crazy person right now because I literally jumped out of bed. Where's my mask? Oh, yes, yeah, so I literally jumped out of bed and came racing out here for the lamp. I like didn't even brush my hair. I woke up like this. I put on this shirt. I bought this shirt for Dan at a thrift store the other day. It's like five sizes too big for me, but now I look like Billie Eilish, but Christmas, so I, I love it. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to jump on and say a quick word about masks. Uh, People are confused because they see me wearing a mask, but then they see my friends not wearing masks and they're like, what is going on? Why does Alex wear a mask and they don't? We have zero COVID cases here. Zero. Not one. In the state that I live in. There's no mask mandate. I know people in other countries where there are mask mandates think that because they have to wear masks that we're bad people for not wearing masks, but there's zero cases here. So I just wanted to like, let that be known. I wear it because I want to normalize wearing masks because I think it's the responsible thing to do to wear one even if you don't need to wear one. Even if there's zero cases where you live, feel free to wear one. It doesn't hurt. We haven't had cases here for a long time but I wear it anyway. My friends don't wear it because there's no cases but when there were cases here they wore their masks everywhere they went and if any cases pop up my friends will probably put their masks back on but at the moment there's zero cases so like I, I just I get a lot of comments. Why are your friends not wearing masks? So I just wanted to tell you like, they're not wearing them because we have no cases. I'm wearing it just because I'm, an, I'm a public figure and I want to set the right example and I want to show people that it's completely normal. There's nothing wrong with wearing a mask. It doesn't hurt. It's the responsible thing to do. Even when you have no cases where you live, it's still the responsible thing to do. So anyway, you know, when I said I was channeling Billie Eilish, I really meant it. All right, well, that was interesting. So actually it turned out that there were originally three of those lamps because when I got there, 
not only did I see the one that I wanted, but I saw the one with the white lampshade. And uh, I said to the lady, oh, it's here. And she said, oh, no, no, there were two with pink lampshades originally. She thought that that's what I was asking for. No, no. But uh, anyway, got both of those. And now I'm just heading over to the Vinnie's. This Vinnie's always has interesting stuff. I'd really like to find some books to put on my bedside tables for the lamps. On the lookout for interesting, quirky things. Trying to stick with the strong theme of like the, the pink and the white and the gold. Oh, that's tempting. No, no. Oh, I close at two thirty. Oh, I'm ten minutes late. Fuck. <laughs>
Oh my god. I just spent $100 on American snacks. Would you like to know what I got for my $100? I got a box of Lucky Charms, $10. Whoppers, because the last time I ate these, I was in Hawaii and I loved them. I think these were $8. Coffee Mate, I have literally no idea what it is, but I'm gonna give it a try because it says it's the number one powdered creamer brand. I don't know what creamer is, so I want to give it a go. The barista inside me is screaming. Goldfish. I've never had goldfish before. A pickle in a bag? Is this, is this like a gimmick or does this exist in America? Like, is this... Made in the USA. Contents. One sassy pickle. Me. I am a sassy pickle. Ah, for my friends over in Scotland. Edinburgh Castle Rock. This was $8 for this bag. I also got violet creams. These are like Scottish creams, like literally my favorite thing. My grandma and my grandpa and my mom used to give me these as a kid. We're Scottish and I love this stuff. And this is literally the only place you can buy it. This was also $8 for this bag. I got a Soda Boy Caramel Cream. I've got a Zero Sugar Cherry Vanilla Coke. How cool is that? Oh, this is cold. Yes. Dr. Pepper Dark Berry. It, it, I've never seen something like this before. Dr. Pepper isn't even like a normal drink here, let alone dark berry Dr. Pepper. It just tastes like normal Dr. Pepper. There is no difference. I just got scammed. Oh, I also got this. This is um Arizona Sparkling Cherry Lime. I Yeah, look, Arizona. I think this Arizona iced tea is like a popular American brand. This is a Brooklyn Original Sparkling Cherry Lime. Cherry seems to be a flavor that is very popular in America, but like nothing is cherry flavored here. Oh, it's so nice and cool. I also got some butter beer. I got a couple of bottles of butter beer. All of that cost me $100. I didn't think it would cost that much. Like I got to the checkout and she's scanning everything up. And then she says, all right, and your total will be $98.72 or whatever it was. And I was like, uh, okay, thank you. In my mind, panic attack. Food's expensive, panic attack. So anyway, I'm gonna you know, try some of these when I get home. But there's one thing that I absolutely must try before I drive away. I can't bring myself to turn my car on and leave until I try the pickle in a bag. But what do I do about the liquid? Do people drink it? Are there instructions? No. Hmm. All right, well, I don't know. What, I, what do I do with the liquid? This, like, why is it a pickle in a bag? Why does this exist? Are you supposed to, do people drink pickle juice? Cause like, the fact that it's in a bag makes me think that you're supposed to eat it on the go. But then if you're on the go and you've got like a big bag of liquid, what are you meant to do with it? Are you supposed to tip it out or drink it? Oh, mama. Ah, uh, that is one sassy looking pickle. I feel like I shouldn't eat this on camera. I'm sorry, mum and dad. Just skip ahead 10 seconds. Mmm, spicy. Rather spicy. There are no words for what I'm experiencing right now. I've never eaten a pickle like this. For a start, it's enormous. Also, it's like like jelly in the center. Why is it so gelatinous? Like pickles that I normally eat are just crunchy all the way through. This is like a bit crunchy on the outside and it's like jelly in the middle. Ugh. Is this what it's like to be American? Sitting in your car, eating a pickle and drinking Dr. Pepper? Is this what Americans do? is on fire and I love it but also like I need a break what do I do with the liquid do I just tip this out do I tip it out the window do I drink it well, I don't know there I have nowhere to put this all right well my mouth is on fire and I'm really really hot and I'm sweating and I need to go home so I'll see you guys at home and we'll decorate the guest bedroom
right, well, I finished my Dr. Pepper pretty quick, so I'm gonna move on to this uh, Arizona iced tea. This is like the biggest can I've seen in my entire life. Is this a, a normal size can in America? Or is this, a, is this considered large? What is this considered? Because here, this is considered like astronomically big. Oh, that was a satisfying sound. Oh my god, it's delicious. All right guys, so I just got home from thrift shopping and I'm here with a public service announcement and that is always wash your hands when you get back from thrifting. Just, just watch this. So I've, I've just got back and here's my hands and they look pretty normal. Some soap. Now what I want you to do is just watch the water. Just watch. Look. Look. Holy crap. Look at that. Look. Literally all I've done is go thrift shopping. Can you believe that? All right, so now that my hands are washed, I can try some of these American snacks and then I'm gonna show you everything that I got while I was thrift shopping. The thing that I'm most interested in trying is Lucky Charms because like, I've literally never had a Lucky Charm in my life and I've seen so many movies that reference this brand of cereal. The funny thing is, in Australia, you wouldn't get away with selling cereal with a sugar content this high. Hang on, that is not, what? These look like cornflakes with marshmallows. Oh my God, is that a unicorn head? Look, there's like little tiny colorful things. It's delicious. To be fair, I haven't eaten cereal in like, I'd say nine years. So maybe Australian cereal is this good too, and I just don't know. <laughs> but also these little colorful things, they're really, really tasty, but they taste more like candy than something you would eat for breakfast. What are these little rainbows? What are they? Marshmallows. Whoppers. Oh my God. Okay, last time I went to Hawaii, when was that? I was there with Tiasha. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. Oh, that's so good. The closest we have to Whoppers are Maltesers. They're like nowhere near as dense. They're more airy inside. These are just the most addictive thing imaginable. Goldfish, vanilla cupcake. Whoa. This just tastes like a, like a shortbread cookie from Woolworths. I can't believe I paid like, 10 bucks for this bag. I expected more, America. I expected more. Ah, on to Scotland. Edinburgh Castle Rock. Ah, oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. I don't even know how to describe this sort of candy. Oh my God. It's like dense and extremely sweet but it also has like this tang, like ginger. You can taste ginger and it kind of like gets in your nose and it assaults your senses in the best way possible. Oh my God, there is no better candy in the world. I also got the Violet Creams. These are a similar texture to the Edinburgh Rock Candy. They're like crumbly. Mm. Oh my God. They taste like soap, but in such a good way. They turn into like a, a powder and then a paste in your mouth. So you bite it and it's crunchy, like ultra crunchy and crumbly. And as you chew, it turns into a fine powder. And then as it mixes with your saliva, I suppose you would say, it turns into a paste. And I know that sounds slightly terrifying, but it's an experience you really must try. Mm. If you've ever been to Harry Potter World at Universal Studios and you've bought the butter beer, 
it's basically exactly this. The only difference is that this one doesn't have the creamy foam on top, but that's literally the only difference. It tastes exactly the same. So that's enough eating. I know you guys didn't come here to watch food. You came here for thrifted content. So let's have a look at what I bought today. And I've also got some things that I bought uh, on a couple of other thrift trips, but I didn't really buy enough stuff in each of those trips to warrant making a video just for that trip. So I've basically just you know, accumulated all of it together. Seriously, sit back and get a snack because you guys are here for the long haul. Like this is going to be very, very, very long because there's a lot of stuff here. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Before I start, can I just say, look at this strong color palette I have going on here. Please appreciate. <laughs> so yesterday I asked you guys whether or not I should go for a strong color palette where everything is like the same theme, or if I should go for like that kind of crazy, weird, eclectic, almost looks like a thrift shop room where everything's different colors, everything's different styles, different time periods, yada, yada. The feedback was mixed, but I do think that more people said you should stick with the one color scheme because as fun as it can be to have an eclectic kind of room, people did point out the fact that, look, this is your guest bedroom. And when your guests stay, you don't want them to feel kind of like busy and stressed out by looking around and seeing lots and lots of different things, which is completely valid. I hadn't even considered that. So what I've done is I've basically gone through all the various things that I've bought and I've tried to put together this color palette of like white, blue, pink, and gold essentially. And I've got other things for future videos that are different colors and stuff that won't be going in this room. They'll be decorating other areas of the house. So let's begin with these two vases that I just picked up from the Windsor Vinnies. I, I wasn't entirely sure on these at first because when I walked into the store and I saw them, I was like, they're cool, but they remind me of a grandma. They definitely look very dated and old. But then I thought to myself, stop. What the hell are you talking about? Your dresser probably belonged to an old lady. These are going to look perfect on the vanity. Uh, surely, surely. Like I'm looking at the vanity over there thinking that's gonna look great with these swans. These are ever so slightly iridescent. They have gold beaks and they have little flowers too behind their heads. They're quite tall, these vases, and they definitely need to be cleaned. They're really, really dirty. They've got, they're just covered in dust. I feel like these have been sitting in someone's house for like 50 years. They've got nothing marked on them. There's no stamps or anything. So I don't know where they're from, where they're made. I would speculate maybe they're from England. I don't know why I speculate that. There's swans in England. So. Cast your eyes over here. Now I've, I've cleared this off because I'm trying to, you know, try, I'm gonna try different aesthetics on this tabletop and see which one is the best. What do you think? Do you reckon these match in with the vibe? I think, yes. I, I think that it's the right sort of time period, especially for the dresser. And the dresser has gold knobs and the swans have gold beaks. We've got this little hint of pink. I think they look really cute. I think they're gonna look stunning with some baby's breath sticking out the top of them. I don't mean to, but I do keep finding Japanese products everywhere I go. So this one says, Say Well Imports, and it's got Japan on it down the bottom there. This was $4, and I actually went to this video about five different times and didn't buy this, because every time I looked at it, I was like, that's cute. But also, I wasn't sure if I needed it or not. And you know what I was saying at the start of the episode, how I was like, you know, I let the universe decide these things for me. The fact that it was still there after all this time, and it was only $4. I actually think that the first time I saw this, it was 10. I'm pretty sure that they've marked it down since the first time I saw it. So let's see what this looks like over here with the swans. Hmm. Okay, not too bad. I just found this for $2. This is a little vase as well. This is another swan. I decided to buy these swans because I saw some pictures on Pinterest where people were decorating their shelves with swans like this. And the funny thing is, guys, often when I see things inside a thrift store covered in dust and sitting alongside other random bric-a-brac knickknacks, you don't really get the vision in mind. But when you see something taken out of a thrift store and styled with the right sort of items around it, suddenly it just brings it to life and it takes on like a whole new meaning. And when I saw this picture and I saw her swan sitting on her shelf, I was like, I've been ignoring every swan that I go past at every single thrift store because every time I look at them, I'm like, oh yes, cute, but looks old and doesn't look cool or quirky. 
But seeing it in that context, it looks so nice. And I was like, I really need to give these swans a try. So I've got this teeny tiny little one. This was a very last minute purchase at the checkout at the Windsor Vinnies because I spotted it as I was paying. I spotted this up on the counter. This is an all glass perfume bottle kind of thing, which it, it doesn't seem to hold very much perfume, but I think that, how does it work? Uh, oh crap, how, how do you work? I believe that you're supposed to put perfume on the inside in there and it's like a perfume dip stick. I think that you dip it and then you're meant to like rub the stick on your wrists or on your neck. I think that's how I've seen these things used before, but it was just fascinating to me that it's glass, but look how perfectly it's cut. Like it's perfectly square. It's a real like eye catching sort of piece. And so I asked her to bring it down so I could look at it. And when she brought it down, she said, oh, here's the box for it, Dan Samuels. Do you recognize that brand? You may recognize the names because Dan is my husband and Samuel is my ex-boyfriend. But the other reason you may recognize the name is because this thing, this is Dan Samuels. So I bought this one at the Dural Vinnies a little while ago. And then I found this one today, the same brand. I had actually never heard of this brand before Dan Samuels, but now I've got two pieces from this brand. This is crystal. This is, I actually thought this was glass, but on the box, it says that it's crystal. This little thing was $25. And the lady was like, oh, that's quite expensive. You know, when she took it off the shelf, she obviously wasn't the one that priced it. And she was like, you sure you want to buy it, darling? Like it's $25. And I said to her, yep. Yeah. Like I, it was so beautiful to me up on the shelf that I was happy to spend that sort of money on it. It's so heavy and incredible. And when I figure out how to open it, I just don't know if I'm supposed to pull or, cause this screws, if I screw, oh, uh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, I'm not breaking it. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, that is it. Okay. So it's got this very thin little stick on it, which I believe when there's perfume in here, this dips inside and then you just, I think that that's what you do with it. Correct me if I'm wrong though. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. All right. So I got some little candlestick holders for the candles that I left in the car. Oh dear. These were $1 each, so I figured, well, may as well get them. I can use them for candles, I could use them for tea lights, but ideally I want to get a bunch of those uh, twisted pastel colored candles and just set them up around the room. And for only $1 each, these, I think these, oh, ah, on the bottom of this, it says made in France, I just noticed. And the brand is R-E-I-M-S. I don't think they're crystal, I think they're just glass but uh, made in France. So I got six of these and having six of those works out perfectly because I have six of these. Now these candles, I went past these many, many, many times at the Lifeline in Castle Hill. I saw them on the shelf weeks ago and then I went back and they were there again. And I went back again and they were still there. And I was like, no one's buying them because they're ugly as heck. <laughs> and yes, they are ugly, yes, but also ugly in like, that cool, ugly aesthetic kind of way. You, you know what I mean, right? So, moment of truth. Let's see if these are gonna fit in here. Come on. Uh, yay! Oh, these candles have been through a lot. The day that I bought these, I went to visit Sam and then I forgot that they were in the car. Shit, 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 shit. I forgot about my candles, shit, no! My car smells like strawberries. Oh, Sam, look. My candles. <laughs> I wasn't meant to be here for long. I was like, oh yeah, they'll be fine. I'm only gonna be here for five minutes and then I got distracted and ended up making jewelry and stayed for hours. This is this is why you don't leave kids and animals in cars, guys. Here. This will make you feel better. <sighs> Cheers. To Klutzes. I think these candles were quite old. Like I reckon some old grandma kept these in her house for many, many years and they survived all that time and then they spent five minutes they with pretty pastel please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, there's this trend where people like twirl, they twist the candles to, well, I, don't, I guess just to look cute and aesthetic. And if you ever wanted to participate in that candle twirling trend, just buy a bunch of candles and leave them in your car. So I do have six of them. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave them because I think what I have to do is probably 
melt it and soften the bottom of them with a, with a torch, you know, like a candle or something so that they actually mold into these properly because they're kind of sitting in there a little bit loose. I did also find some other candlestick holders. These ones were $2 each. So my intention for these was to also put those funny curly candles in these. These have like the tiniest little hole up here. So I am going to have to find some different candles to put in these ones, but $2 each and I got, uh, I think I got six of them. Yes. I have six of them. $12 for all of these beautiful candle holders. Now, I also got over this side here, you already know about the lamps, but let's have a closer look at them. So I was uh, over the moon to find out. Well, the pink lampshade was still available because this is the one that, uh, I just, I can't believe that I left this behind the first time that I saw it. You know, when I looked at the footage back again after that shopping trip, I was like, Do was I? I don't know, you, you know they say hindsight's 2020, right? Because I guess when I saw it when I was first there, I was like, yeah, it's okay, but I don't have a matching set. But uh, it doesn't matter that much. Or no, it kind of well, does, because look at this. Do you see what I mean, right? Like this one has such a teeny, teeny, tiny little lampshade on it. It just, it looks really disproportionate and very, very strange. This one looks the way that it's supposed to look, glorious and beautiful. And I think that this, is either going to look very good on the dresser or very good on this little coffee table that I got behind me, but I, I can't put it on the bedside tables because it's not matching. I, I would need identical ones on each side. So unless I go shopping for new lampshades, but also the base of these is a slightly different color. Can you see that? This one's much more pale than this one. So yeah, apparently there were two exactly the same as this one and one of them sold. Of course it's sold. They're only $6 each. Can you believe this? This for $6, amazing. Especially considering I think I paid like 15 or 20 for each of those little ones back there. Okay, I'm going to humor you guys for a moment because people were saying in the comments, Alex, you need bigger lamps for the bedside tables. So let's just see what it looks like with a bigger lamp. All right, what do we think? For those of you that left comments saying you need to get a bigger lamp for the bedside table, what do you think about the bigger lamp? I personally don't like it. I think that I like the other one sitting on here a bit better. This is such a statement piece, this lamp. Now, I do believe that I grossly overpaid for this. I paid $20 for this. And I know that that's probably too much for something so simple, but because it's round and because it's got this little sort of hollow in it, it was perfect for what I wanted to do. So what I've seen on Pinterest a lot is people take these sort of round coffee tables and they paint them like a pastel purple, or sometimes they do pink or you know yellow, for example. You give it like a really nice matte pastel color, and it's a really good sort of accent piece to put next to a chair, and they just seem to sit like a lamp, a candle, and some books. Now, I'm yet to find any books that I want for any of these tables. Books are kind of hard, because I don't just want to buy books for the sake of it. I want to actually get books that I'm interested in and also books that look nice on the outside. So I'm really taking my time with the coffee table books. So the vision for it is to have a lovely accent lamp, potentially a candle, although that one's a little bit too tall. Look, it's a work in progress, guys. You get what I mean though, right? Like I, things always look nicest when they come in threes. So I only want to put three items, lamp, something, and little dish. That's gonna be the plan. It'll take me a little while to figure out exactly which items that I want to put with it, but I think that that's how I'm gonna use this lamp. I think that I'm gonna put it in the corner on the coffee table next to a really cute chair when I eventually find one. There was that pink chair that I saw at the antique store that a lot of people were like, Alex, you have to go back and buy that. But I thought it was a little bit expensive. I think it was like 300 and something dollars, which I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that too expensive or is that a reasonable price for a piece of furniture like that? I could go get that, but I'm gonna keep an eye out, take my time still to find the perfect chair, but this is the vision. What color do you think I should do the coffee table? Should I do the coffee table white, purple, pink, yellow, green, blue? I really, I don't know. Um, I need your suggestions. I'm ridiculously excited about these bookends that I found today. These were sitting on top of a bookshelf that I bought. The bookshelf, uh, I'll show you a bit later, but this, the set of two was $7. They're called Heart Bookends and there's no brand on them. So I'm sorry if anyone wanted to try and buy these themselves. I have absolutely no idea what brand they are or where they're from. But this love heart is just such a beautiful and pleasing shape. It's like a really cute, chunky love heart. These are just 
stunning. How nice is that? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy about these. Now, let's have a look at this little collection I have behind me. Now, I've been sort of curating this collection, I suppose, over the past couple of weeks. Um, sometimes when I'm out and about, I'll just duck into a Vinnie's or whatever and I'll spot a pink vase and I'll buy it. So I haven't been able to feature these in any videos yet because these have just come from all different random places at random times. So we'll start with the one that I'm the most excited about. You guys know how much I love this sort of glass. You know, the art glass with like the, the swirls and the dots and all the different patterns and the bubbles inside and everything. So this, when I saw this, oh my God, my heart skipped a beat. I was so happy. This was $15 and it's absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful pastel blue color. I'm so, so excited to set this up somewhere. I also found this. This is very interesting. This is a lamp. This was $8, but this is one solid piece of glass. Also functions as a bell. So it's got this little opening at the top. There's the light bulb down in there. And it's a really, really nice smooth matte blue glass. So it's got a darker color blue on the inside and then this pastel kind of blue on the outside. This is just really, really cool. I could not turn this down and $8 is a great price for this too. Now I have two really, really interesting pieces of German history, I suppose that you could say. So I was at the Salvos at Dural and I spotted this and I was drawn to it because I love the colored glass. And when I got nice and close to it, I saw this little sticker. This sticker says, made in Western Germany. Now, I'm not a, a history buff by any means. What I do know is because this was made in Western Germany and uh, Germany is now united, this must be at least as old as when Germany was divided. <laughs> so, I saw it and I was like, that's amazing. That's a, that's a piece of history right there. And as I was browsing the shelves a little bit further, I spotted this, which I thought was beautiful, a big pink vase. And on the bottom, once again, West Germany, right there, West Germany. So I don't know if you guys are daydreamers like me, but sometimes when I find items from thrift stores, I think to myself, who owned this? What's its story? How old is it? What has it seen? So look at this, this uh, on the side here, there's this little sticker, which says, I'm going to I'm going to take a stab at it and say it says Schurich Kara Milk. No, Keramik. Sh Schurich Keramik made in West Germany. I love to come up with stories in my head and I can just picture that these were owned by like an old German couple that immigrated to Australia in the 50s or 60s and they brought these precious belongings with them or maybe someone's family was over there and they went to visit them and they brought these back as souvenirs. They have a story. They do have a story and I'm pretty certain that the one person donated both of these things. So I've kept them together and they're just, this is just beautiful. This was $30 and like when I saw the made in West Germany thing, I was like, it's vintage. Like I, I really don't mind paying $30 for that. Like I don't mind at all. This also has like a, a code on the bottom of it. It says 24422. So I'm gonna have to do some Googling and try and find out what that means. But at least I've got the brand, I've got where it was made and we've got some sort of product code. So I might be able to figure out how old this is and what its history is. And uh, this little thing, there's, I, I don't know what brand or anything. It's just got that made in Western Germany sticker. This one was 10 and uh, the lady at the counter was like, $10 for such a little thing, how ridiculous. It's always funny when like the ladies that work at these op shops go to, you know, put you through the checkout and then they see the price on some of these things and they're like, what? <laughs> Cause they're not the ones that put the price on it. Half the time they're like, who priced this? This is worth $2. You're not gonna pay $10 for this, are you? But like I said, the Western Germany sticker made me realize these are definitely vintage. So I was happy to pay that extra money for that. I think that's really reasonable actually for a piece of history like this. So these, we're really starting to get a strong kind of color palette going on here. All right, so some interesting pieces that I have been picking up along the way that people didn't realize I was buying these because I've been getting all these comments saying, Alex, why are you passing up all the Wedgwood? I wasn't passing up all of it. I was just passing up the more expensive pieces. 
So the first Wedgwood piece that I got was this little one here. I got this for $10 out of Vinnie's. This is a beautiful, beautiful little plate. And the funny thing was, I found this exact plate in another store that same day, the exact same one, and they were charging 30 for it. So getting this for 10 was great. I also got this one at another store a couple of days later. This one was 15. This is also Wedgwood made in England. It's got the stamp on the back. And I also got this. I found this at the Dural Vinnies the other day, and this one was 12. And uh, if you watched my antique store video, I went to the antique store and spotted about 10 of these and they were like 45 or $50 each for the same thing. It's got Captain Arthur Philip on it, but I'm going to face it out this way so you can just see this little star. Kind of looks like a snowflake to me. Is anyone watching from the Czech Republic? Because I've got a little piece here that I couldn't pass up. So this says made in the Czech Republic. It's called Bohemia Crystal, blown by Crystal X in the Bohemia region of the Czech Republic. And uh, it says a tradition from the 11th century. So it was really nice that this came with its box because it's got, you know, all the information on it. It says spring is the brand. This is just the most delicate, dainty, beautiful little vase you've ever seen. And I just said vase and not vase because the longer that I'm on YouTube and the more that people leave comments and point out I'm saying words wrong, I really start to lose track of my own accent. Like I used to say vase. That was how I used to say it. And lately, I didn't even realize until a disgruntled Australian left a comment the other day and they were like, Alex, why are you saying vase the American way, vase? And I didn't even realize I was doing it. And I'm just, I'm getting lost in my own accent now because every time someone leaves a comment and they're like, you're saying that thing wrong, I, I can't help but be ever so slightly influenced. <laughs> so sometimes I go back and forth and I say vase and then I say vase and then I say vase and this is a vase made in the Czech Republic. It was $8. It is so beautiful. It's crystal, it says hand wash only on here, and it says Bohemia crystal made in the Czech Republic. It's got these beautiful flowers on it, and it's just, it's so dainty. The rim of it is so thin. There's literally nothing to it. Look how thin it is. This, I don't know if you'll be able to tell. It's so thin that my camera can't even focus on it. Like my camera keeps trying to focus on the background because it, it thinks that this doesn't exist because it's so thin. This is just absolutely stunning. Congratulations on your purchase of Bohemia Crystal Glassware. This product is not only one of the finest on the market, but also the most innovative in design and technique. I just felt very drawn to this. And also because it comes in a box, it could also make for a really nice gift. This is the sort of thing where I've been purchasing things that I don't necessarily need, but knowing that Christmas is coming up, I'm like, I might just get that because I could give this as a gift. This could be a really good gift for one of my friends. So yet to decide what to do with this one, but really, really love it. I found this, uh, you might remember when I was at the antique store, I spotted a lot of these, I think they call them daisy foot vases. This was only $5 and see how it's got this really big, heavy daisy foot on the bottom and then it slims out into this very, very fine point. So this is obviously great for either putting single, you know, roses or whatever in, or I could sit my avocado seeds on the top and propagate them. This is the same sort of bottom as what's on that big squiggly uh, bowl thing. See how these both have that sort of daisy foot on the bottom? So the fact that this was $5 and I saw these at the antique store for 40 to 50, this was a really good find. And I also found this, this was such a good find. This was $20 and the shape of it is just so aesthetically pleasing to me. I've uh, got quite a few of these now that have this sort of frilly edge on them. And this goes from dark blue to a lighter blue. And just look, he's so cute and chunky. I just love him. I can't wait to put some flowers or like put my little avocado here. My poor avocado seeds, I keep moving them from thing to thing. Uh, I've probably swapped them around like five different times between different vessels that I've thrifted. But this one, I think this is too cool to have an avocado seed. I think I need to find something really awesome to put in this. But I just, I love it. It's such a nice shape. I also got this bowl because when I spotted this and it was only $5, it reminded me a little bit of that really cool blue glass bowl that I showed you uh, in the other episode. I know they're not exactly the same, kind of different shades of blue and also slightly different styles, but the fact that it was just this really beautiful sheet of blue glass turned into a bowl, I thought these are gonna look really, really lovely together. So I had to get this and $5 is great for that. I have so much more stuff, guys. What is in this box here is probably some of the coolest stuff. 
that I've ever thrifted, ever. And I'm really excited to show it to you. But this video has probably gone on for long enough today. I haven't even started trying to style any of that stuff that I bought. So I think before I unbox these things and show you all of this, I'll probably try and set up that dresser and then tomorrow we can have a look at this stuff and set all of this stuff up. Actually, there, there is one thing in this box that I'm just, I'm dying to show you and I have to show you right now. You know that manifestation thing I've been talking about all these days? Look what I manifested into reality. I found this at the Lifeline in Pennant Hills and I screamed, like internally. I didn't want anyone to look at me funny. Screamed internally, very, very, very loud. It exists, the shell vase, it exists. So begins the shell, the shell. <laughs> so um, I either need to nominate one of the shelves that I've already purchased and turn it into my shell shelf, or I'm going to need to go out and find a special one specifically for my shell items. Ideally, I want to find one that's got some really interesting shape to the shelf and I want it to be quite tall. And even if it's not white, I can always paint it white, but okay. So if this is a good starter for you, there's more excellent things in this box just here, but I'm gonna unbox all of that tomorrow because I'm, I don't want this to drag on forever and ever. If I sat down and just showed you guys everything that I'd bought, We'd be here for days. So let's just put this one over here. All right, I know this is starting to look crazy. Something else that I'm going to be showing you tomorrow are some beautiful, stunning vintage mirrors that I bought, but we're not gonna look at those just yet because I have a pink and blue dressing table to style right now, so please hold while I get this all sorted. No, wait, I just remembered something. I also got this little set of candles. This was $4. So there's three tall candles, then there's three perfectly round ones, and then these two here. So I'd like to try and do the twisty thing with these. Apparently all you have to do is just fill like a pot with hot water, not boiling, but just hot water, and you leave them in there for 10 minutes and then you take them out and you give them a twist. So let's give it a try. They've had a good soak in the hot water. So let's uh, give him a twist. Oh, oh, this feels satisfying. This feels very, very strangely satisfying. I also don't know how hard I'm supposed to go at this. Oh, oh here we go. Okay, something's starting to happen. Slowly starting to happen. Okay, I feel like I might be doing this wrong. I think I'm definitely doing this wrong. Oh God, this looks... Nothing like I thought it was going to look. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ha hang on a minute. What have I done wrong? Why is this happening? What did I do wrong? Oh dear. Oh dear. Using a rolling pin or the heels of your hand, flatten the middle portion of the candle just until the shape shifts from rounded to ovular. Be sure to leave the ends untouched. Working quickly, twist the candle slowly. Instructions weren't clear. Got stuck in ceiling fan. So you flatten it. Ah, uh, right. I don't think I've ever felt so dumb. Oh, I see. All right, bit of a learning curve, slightly. Okay, it's still not quite right, but better than the first one. Guys, that's it. That's everything for today. I think I really like how it's looking right now. It's very, very different to how it looked yesterday. Do you prefer how it looks right now? Or do you like yesterday's vibe better? I'm still not sure if I want to leave these lamps like this or if I want to change the lamp shades or what I'm going to do exactly. Definitely keen to hear your thoughts down below. But what I like most here is the little couple of little pops of blue and that shell vase over there is making me 
so happy you can't even begin to understand how happy that makes me. My twisty candles didn't turn out that well, but it was my first try. So I'm going to try uh, find some more of those at a thrift store because they're very easy to come by. And I'll try that again next time. Also, I was wondering, what do you guys think about these? So you know how I got these little candlestick holders? I could always spray these different colors. I could spray them various pastel colors, or do you think I should leave them clear? I've got that one clear, but in some of my Pinterest inspiration photos, they had various colored ones. And uh, you know, when I was at the antique store, I saw some blue candle holders that were like $250 each. So very tempting to spray some of these things blue. They were only $2 each. I'm just not sure. What do you guys think? Do you think I should do that with the candlesticks? Up until this point, the only thing in this room that wasn't thrifted was my bed. But now I have one of my cookbooks, not thrifted, and a small pile of books here, also not thrifted. So aside from those things, everything that you see came from a thrift store and I'm really, really happy. I feel like we're slowly getting there. I think that I've, I've almost nailed the dresser. I think it's almost perfect. So I just need to figure out now what to do about those bedside tables because they're still a bit up in the air. I've got a few more shelves to sort out. I've got this, oh, I didn't even show you. Oh my God. Do you see this bookcase? Uh, I just bought this and this case is, this bookshelf is coming in here, but it's got some things on it that I still need to film. But that's all I have for you for today. Tell me what your favorite item was from today's video. My favorite item is, oh, I was gonna say without a doubt the shell vase, but also this lamp, but also this blue vase. I really don't know. I'm really just very, very happy with everything. Obviously I haven't styled all of the items. There was a lot of stuff on here, as you might remember earlier in the video. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, turn on notifications so you know the next time that I'm uploading about my guest bedroom makeover. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah. Why is it white? If this is coffee, why is it white? Why isn't it brown? This is, this is white. I don't think this is powdered coffee. I thought, I thought this was powdered hazelnut coffee. tastes like milk. Is crema like milk? Is it is it powdered milk? Did I just did I just make a cup of hazelnut flavored powdered milk? <sighs> Let's put that in. Ooh. Okay. All right. Am I doing it right? Is this how you're supposed to use this product? It's 12:40 a.m., guys. I don't think I've been to bed before 3 a.m. once since I started Thriftmas. Three more hours of editing to go and then I'll be uploading. Happy Thriftmas day 14.